Hi and welcome back to a new video. Sheik also joined us because she couldn't wait to see the new Intel NUC12 Extreme compute element. Very interesting thing. I received this box which also says pre-production engineering sample and that's typically a sign for something very very interesting. We already received something like this about one and a half years ago when we also built a custom water block for an Intel NUC. This is the newest version and uh, yeah I think we'll just go straight ahead disassemble this and check what this is made of. Interesting. If you are looking for a great dedicated root server, Hetzner is offering this with the AX41. The AX41 is powered by AMD Ryzen desktop CPU 3600 with 6 cores, NVMe SSDs and 64GB of memory. We already visited Hetzner this year to show how these servers are built. You can find the link to this video in the description down below. And the AX41 is now also available with IPv6 only option for 34 euro per month. Feel free to check it out in the link below. Even though the Intel NUC looks like a graphics card, it couldn't be further away from being a graphics card because this is also not supposed to be plugged into a mainboard. This is an output. So you can actually attach a graphics card to this, which makes these things very unique and also to me just very interesting devices. In the previous video we also plugged this into a mainboard but not data connection wise, we just took the voltage supply to make sure that this thing can actually start up. But I think we'll just go straight ahead and uh, disassemble this, remove the cooler so you can see what's sitting underneath. What we should find is a CPU socket. We should find M.2 slots and memory slots because that's actually a completely functional PC in the size and shape of a graphics card. Compared to the previous one, I also found this small cover on the back so we can easily insert an M.2 drive in the back. You can also see this should be a socket 1700 backplate. And now I only have to figure out how to disassemble this, where the screws are sitting. So it seems like we have one screw on the left with an arrow underneath and one screw on the right with another arrow. I think they're supposed to remove the cover. A very interesting heatsink. That's also where a 12900K should fit. And I'm curious if this heatsink will allow to cool a 12900K. I think Right now there is no CPU sitting in the socket. I'm not 100% sure, but it should not be inside. Also quite interesting, bottom left, that makes sense, generation 4 NVMe SSD. But right next to it, I'm not sure why this is labeled 1.2 volt DDR4. That is certainly a strange DDR4 slot, but might be that it's wrongly labeled and should be on here. Two sodium slots, I still have to find some memory sticks to fit them in here. But I think we'll just go ahead and further disassemble this piece. Finally removed the backplate, we can also find a PCH underneath, I assume, cooled by the backplate, thermal pad sitting right here, Wi-Fi module also, I noticed again, looking at the socket backplate, I'm not sure if this is visible on camera, but it's quite heavily bent. Seems to be something that's more common on the 1700 socket. By the way, we will have a nice product coming to kind of fix this soon, but I will, yeah, this will be a completely def different video. So let's just continue here. Now the frame is also gone. I just stuck the BIOS battery on here. It was original sitting in the frame, but we might just want to power it this way, completely blank without any kind of cover. And the BIOS battery certainly will help. Now just looking at connectivity of this thing, it's quite impressive. We have six times USB 3.8 generation two type A. We have 10G and 2.5G ethernet. HDMI 2.0B and dual Thunderbolt 4 aka USB Type-C. It's actually quite impressive what kind of connectivity you have on such a tiny thing. Also just found this cable adapter whatever thing included in the box. Seems to go to this connector but then we have another bunch of weird connectors I'm not sure what they're for. This could be like case connection but yeah not going to need this. Backplate. Just from the feel, it could be there's a thermal paste underneath. Feels quite sticky, quite difficult to remove. Could be that I was wrong regarding the CPU. Yep, definitely a CPU in the socket. The heatsink is just a huge vapor chamber. Some thermal pads on top to make contact to the VRMs as well. Intel Confidential, nice. I still don't know what it is. 
After a quick search on Google, it seems to be a 12900 without K. Wouldn't it be much nicer to have a 12900K in there? Okay. From what we found out last time with the first Intel NUC, we were not able to simply just plug it in a board and go. Because it would seal PCI Express lanes and also it could be a conflict because this is an output while the mainboard also has an output. So you're connecting two outputs and that's not how it's supposed to be. Last time we used some tape and just taped the PCI Express lanes and only kept the voltage supply. Because we will definitely also need to still the 3.3 volt and 12 volt, also some ground, which are supplied through the PCI Express slot. That's also what we figured out in the last video. The power supply for the NUC is just this 12 volt EPS connector, which is the same as what you have on a motherboard. But now I thought instead of just simply like taping the slot again and using a second system, I thought about just getting a simple PCI Express riser thing from AliExpress and this has a 24 pin connection which should make it a bit easier for debugging just to see if it works and also just to use it as like a secondary system because my idea was to simply plug the 24 pin connector which should deliver the 3.3 and 5 volt supply for the NUC. Now added an SSD, also some 3200 DDR4 memory, also applied thermal paste, fresh one. Now we'll put the heatsink back and then I'm wondering if we can boot the 12900K on this. Let's see if something happens and if something happens, what actually happens? Hmm. Well, nothing happens. Well, that was a bit stupid, I have to admit that, because obviously this power switch is powering on the board, but at the same time we have to first power on the PSU itself to make sure we have standby power and power delivered to the board to be able to start up the board. So we first have to solder probably a tiny connector switch to the backside of this PCB to be able to switch on the PSU over the 24 pin connector and this way then start the PCB. Seems like we have quite a bit of soldering to do. The first thing would be our power switch and unfortunately I just didn't have a switch here which is not that problematic. Just going to use two wires which I can just plug into each other and we will have to attach them to pin 4 and 5 of the 24 pin connector and then we already have our power switch. Perfect, you can hear the PS starting, also lights are flashing, power is there. The last thing I quickly want to check before assembling again is if 3.3 volt of the 24 pin and the PCI Express connector are actually connected. The first three pins right here are 3.3 volt on the 24 pin and the pins 9 and 10 on the left side of the PCI Express should be 3.3 volt, so counting down from top here to 9 and 10. This one and this one and all the others shouldn't. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so 3.3 is also present. So here we are again. First of all, connecting current for the PSU. And we also have a green light on the NUC, that is great. I also have the Elmore PMD attached, just to know that, I mean, even though the that's probably a standby LED sliding up, the device is not running, we can clearly see that. But let's check what happens if we now press the power button. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was just about to say that I'm not sure if it's working or not, but uh, it seems like it's working. And again, one step further, I even made it into the BIOS, as you can see, 12900K, correctly detected. Quickly also put the fan back on, or just the entire bracket. Not sure why the fan is not spinning at this moment, could be that's some kind of like very good fan curve. That's what we also saw on the previous NUC, maybe I have to restart again. The BIOS seems to be kind of buggy sometimes. It just switched off the dynamic power technology. If this is set to custom, then you can find all kind of settings. Well, actually, I now set it to energy efficient performance. You can see the PL1 and PL2 are set, but I cannot increase these. I can lower them, but 65 and 221 are max. I set the current limit to 999 and power supply capacity to 1250, but that's all I can adjust. Maybe let's just not use this and see what happens. 
Now this explains why booting up Windows uh, took so long and also why it was quite slow in BIOS. The CPU for whatever reason is clocked to 400 megahertz across all of the cores. I guess because it was not made for the 12900K. Anyway, we can find the NUC in the mainboard tab. So you can see it's actually the system and also memory was applied correctly. 32 gigabyte, 1600. That's all running correctly. Seems to be related to some power limit thing. At least PL1 and PL2 are set correctly, but if I look at system package power with 6 watt, that is a bit off. Fast forward almost two hours later. Meanwhile, I had to restart the system about 10 times, try a ton of different BIOS settings, and then I ended up plugging the SSD into a different system to install XTU, and now we are back. I was able to at least also be able to adjust some of the cores, which didn't help to fix the 400 megahertz issue, but now I'm wondering if this might be rela related to the processor ICC Max setting, which seems to be very low right here. The system is acting pretty strange. I'm not sure what it is doing right now. Yes, uh, this was the issue. So setting ICC Max, even though this is still I mean, I'm not sure what it is doing right here, but you can see the clock is back up. Now I have to find what's the max value right here. Yeah, but this is for sure fixing all the performance issues. And now after spending a bit more time on the power limits, you can see we can actually completely freely overclock the CPU on here. That's amazing. It's still downclocking to some regard, but you can see on some cores it's always going to 5.2. So there's no like clock limit. I think there's only a power limit overall. So even though this seemed to be blocked in BIOS, in Windows it seems to be not the case. I also had to add a fan for the backside to cool the PCH from the back because I noticed in BIOS that I was exceeding 100 degrees Celsius on the PCH that was a bit toasty. And with a fan on the back, it's like 80 to 85. I'm also asking myself the question if Cinebench will work at this setting or if we will straight run into like thermal issues. But looking at power limit, you can see both PL1, PL2, 225 watt. That should be much more than what the cooling is capable of. All right, let's just run. Very interesting though, CPU package is not exceeding like 125, even though this is set much higher. Temperatures are surprisingly still okay, even though the clock is four gigahertz. But it's 7,000 points. As you can see, a little bit more fine tuning and I was able to run 160 watt power draw on the CPU, but it's now constantly hitting like 100 degrees Celsius. But still 7,300 points. The Intel NUC 12 Extreme is an extremely interesting product and I think at this point we are just cooling limited, which means if you're interested, if you want to, we can do a follow-up video where we, I would think about some interesting cooling solutions because I think Compared to the last NUC, we have so much more opportunities to tune this thing. It seems like just using XTU with the workaround, there are no power limits because on the previous NUC with the 9980HK, there was still some kind of power limit somewhere in the BIOS, which you could not unlock. For this, it seems to be completely open. It should be possible that we're able to tune the 12900K quite a bit on this thing. As long as we make sure that the VRM is not overheating, then it should be fine. Otherwise, the computing element itself I still see it as a very interesting product you could plug into an existing system. So for me personally, I can see plugging this into my next like project irrationality. And for example, if I'm working on the two videos like German and English, I would start with rendering the English after I checked everything. And then this takes like half an hour on the project irrationality. I could use this for the rendering and then keep working on the other one. So that could be quite interesting. I still like the way they made those. Okay, let me know if you would like to see a follow-up video. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye.